Good morning, good moment. Welcome. Welcome to the Crystal Crawford Show. Welcome, really. I'm so glad you're here, and I'm so fucking excited about what I get to talk about today, because I called this episode Profiting Relentlessly and Other Things We Avoid to Try to Be Nice. All right? <laughs> so, hey, everybody joining me. Um, oh, I feel like Hulk today, just in the, ugh, all the things that are going on in my world and all the things that I want to talk to you guys about today and all the things I want to invite us to as a group of incredible, powerful, fucking potent creators. If you have friends that need to hear this conversation, will you help me and share this so that they can join us? Okay, profiting relentlessly and all the other things that we avoid to try to be nice. I did a really interesting post on my page today. Um, it went like this. I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling. Are you trying to be nice instead of having money? And I wanna give you guys a little bit of backstory about um, the energy of this today. First of all, right above my head or to the side if you're watching live is a link for you to start and play in our next five day challenge. I, I love these challenges for so many reasons. It gives, it allows me to put together something for you that you can actually take action on. And what I find with a lot of us creators and healers is that we're very good with the theory and very good with the concept and not necessarily so epic with the action. So you can check the comments for the link. You can register right now. It's 15 bucks. I want to invite you. Um, but I also want to tell you a little bit about where this came from. First of all, I this concept of relentless profit came in from looking at my own world when it comes to business about what it's taken me what it's taken from me to get me here. But just today, in the last 24 hours, I was introduced to a guy that you guys may already know about. His name's Grant Cardone. Grant Cardone. I want to say it's so Latin right now. <laughs> and you can Google him. He's everywhere. Um, he's got millions of followers, tons of things on the internet. He's um, an American cowboy like me. But I, I can't quite get enough right now. I'm, I'm like absorbing his content. And I was watching a video right before I came on to this live where he's talking to a group of insurance agents about what it really takes to grow their business. Like what does it take to actually grow 10 times? And it's so interesting to hear the things that are coming out of his mouth because they're the things that are coming out of my mouth, only I'm just starting. And all of you in the creation of what it is that you're aware of that you can bring to this world are in some phase or some beginning stage of what it is that you're going to be in the future, right? Grant Cordon is probably what I'm going to be in. Uh, who even knows? You can't even really compare. But, 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 but what was striking me was the things that were coming out of his mouth are the things that I'm saying now. You right now are already aware of what it takes to create what it is you want to create in the world. And that's just true. You may not be functioning from there. You may not be choosing that. You may not be claiming it. You may not be acknowledging it. But in an attempt to avoid all the things you think it means about you to be relentlessly profitable, you are avoiding the very things that will make everything grow. Now, where this question came uh, in, are you trying to be nice instead of having money? And by the way, a lot of you wrote questions this morning um, uh, in my group. I can't even talk. A lot of you guys wrote questions to me that I'm going to answer in this show. But let me rant for a second and then we'll get into your questions, all right? Because rant. Because who doesn't love a good rant? <laughs> what was I going to say? Oh, are you trying to be nice instead of having money? Okay. So... When I was first sort of diving into his stuff, Grant Cordon, go check him out, great stuff around sales and stuff. One of the things you'll start to notice when you first go into his stuff is that it's very typical kind of American rah, 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 blue suit sort of energy, right? Like it's, um, and so I looked at all that. I look at stuff, I look at energies, you know, and it's also very male. And a lot of the people that I speak to, sorry guys, are female or function more like females. Now, Okay, fine. All of that aside, I also looked at 
what he was naming his things, all the different, I looked at everything. I looked at all the different price points he had, all the different products he had, and I was like, this is actually really brilliant because you can either get a bracelet that makes you feel better for like $3, or you can buy a $2,000 set of all of his courses. Brilliant, okay, cool. But here's the other thing I looked at. He is willing to be every single energy that I have ever judged as wrong, pushy, um, blatant, salesy, he's willing to be all that. And I had the biggest fucking download of my life as I was looking at that about the next program I'm putting together. Cause the next program I'm putting together has a lot of those similar elements. And I've been doing this weird push pull thing with it. And this is not the first program I've done this with. Every single time I'm aware of a greater possibility, I seem to do this thing where I both sabotage it and expand it in the world until I get over it and I just go. You might recognize yourself there. So I looked at that. I was like, wow, he's willing to be all these energies. And so his business is like billions of dollars. He's just like, go. He's like, why would you look at the money you made last year to make the money you want to make this year? And why you've got to know your why and like all these different things. And what I became aware of is, is that a bunch of us, Hundreds of thousands of us are avoiding the energies that we could choose to be that would expand everything beyond our wildest dreams. And so everything that is times a fucking godzillion, can we destroy it and create all that? Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. If you don't know what I just said, that's the clearing statement. And you can go to theclearingstatement.com and get more information on that. Here's the thing about the tools of access consciousness, guys. And you might hear me talking about this way too much in the next coming days. The tools of access consciousness can be used to make you feel better, or they can be used to create a totally different fucking reality for you and for the world. And if you are keeping everything small in your world, if you are not being relentless about what it would take to expand everything that you know, you are discrediting yourself and you are devaluing the world. You are actually taking away from the world and being selfish and hoarding and not being generous with what you are in the world. Every single fucking one of you has a gift, is a gift, a set of gifts for this world that nobody else can duplicate. And the more you hide that and you judge it and you make it less and you aren't relentless about the execution of it into the world, the less you profit from it and the less the world gets to profit from it. And that's fucking horseshit. It's horseshit. Because we are the ones, guys. We are the creators. We're the Renaissance people. We're the ones that are here to institute and institute. That's the same word. Actualize a totally different fucking reality. Now the thing is, you never have to choose to be that. You can always judge yourself. You can, you can judge yourself out of existence. And that's what most of us do. And we have tools for that, by the way. Interesting point of view. I have this point of view for every single thought, feeling, and emotion. That's another show. Go to the rest, go to my YouTube channel for another show. But what I'm talking about is how many energies are you avoiding being that you could truly choose to be that if you would choose and be willing to be them would expand and create different possibilities on the planet with total ease. And everything that doesn't allow you to be aware of that, will you please destroy and uncreate all that? Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. Clearing statement. What does that do? That wipes out the energy of the limitation that you seem to think is more real than you. You are the vital piece. You are a key. You are a lock. You do not have to choose it. I will probably always be a voice for you choosing it because I'm insane. And I seem to think that if I keep talking louder and on more Facebook lives, that at some point you will be inspired. I might need to have my hopes and dreams bar run, but you don't have to choose it. You get to be whatever the fuck you want to be, but is it enough for you? And so this thing of being relentlessly profitable, and this was the, as I was creating this challenge that is to the below of me and to the side of me that you can sign up for if you haven't already, and this program that's coming after, I'm aware of a future with this that is not yet. Okay, I'm aware that I'm avail I am here to create a different future with business that you can choose if you want. 
that you can choose if you want. That if I never create it, doesn't get, get instituted on the planet. And you have that same ability to win something completely different. It may, maybe it's around business, but it's your flavor. And so are you right now refusing to profit from yourself, from who you are in the world? Are you refusing it? Are you refusing to be energies that you could choose to be that if you were willing to be them would open up this universe of profitability, universe of money, universe of clients, universe of possibility in the world? Only you have that choice available to you. So the question is always, what will you choose? And why the fuck do you, why are you doing what you're doing? And what do you really want to create in the world? And if you were willing to be relentless about what it is you are, about all the myriad of ways that that could show up, if you never gave up on you, what would be available to the rest of us and what would be available to you? This thing about being relentless profit, like I forget what I called the thing, relentless profit, relentless profit. It was so interesting calling this that because I, I was aware of all the myriad of judgments about those words. It's not soft enough, hi beautiful. It's not soft enough, it's not kind enough, it's not gentle enough. All of those are judgment, by the way. And then I looked at the way the earth is and I was like, the earth is fucking relentless. If you clear cut an area of land and you take off all the trees, which is what a clear cut is, the earth relentlessly populates that piece of land with like every single plant species known to man that it can find, right? We, everything we would call weeds and mushrooms and bugs, within weeks, that blank space is filled because the earth is relentless. The earth's tsunamis, tornadoes, hurricanes, the energy of the earth when it's a volcano, relentless. Somewhere we bought that being relentless about what it is we know is wrong, vicious, terrible, mean, and awful. Bullshit. Everything that is times a godzillion. Right, wrong, good, bad, pop, alcohol, nine shorts, boys and meals. It's fucking bullshit. But you are the only one that can champion that. You are the only one that can take up the challenge of who you truly are. You're the only one that can walk with the sense of it. You're the only one that can cultivate it. So it requires you to be your biggest fan and you to be your biggest champion and you to be your biggest mouthpiece. Not because it's validated or valued, but because it is. Because you are. And so all the tools of access consciousness. Go buy the 10 keys to total freedom and make that shit your bitch. Buy the 10 keys to total freedom by Gary Douglas and Dane here and make that book your bitch. Why? Because if you are functioning at anything less than quantum leap, you are functioning as less than what you are. And for what reason would we keep doing that? For what reason? All the stories, all the reasons and justifications, all the excuses, I get it, I've been there, but I'm not choosing that anymore. And now you've got to look at what you want to choose. Do you want to keep using the tools of access consciousness to sort of feel better? You can, you will, you'll feel better, it's amazing. Or do you want to use the tools of access consciousness to choose and be a fucking different reality on this planet? To succeed at something only you are ever going to succeed at that will invite the rest of us into something greater, more magical, more space, more amazing, right? That's a choice you have available. Maybe, maybe you don't. Or is it just for me? What choices do you have available to you that you can now be and claim and have? All right, so I got some questions in the relent. If you guys aren't in my new group, I have a new group called Relentless Profit and Awareness Challenge. It's a sister group to my Awareness Challenge group. And it's gonna be the group where we do challenges. Right now there's a paid challenge going on that you can sign up for somewhere next to my head here. In that group there's gonna be free challenges. And what do I mean by that? The challenge is gonna to be to use a thing and see what you can create with it, to actually use it, to actually engage with it. So Relentless Profit. So I'm gonna go in there and look at the questions you guys asked because you asked a bunch of them. So, okay, here's the thing about money. 
<laughs> I'm so glad. Cool, you guys. I see your comments. Thank you. Hey, if you guys are watching somewhere in the world, comment. Tell me where you are. I'm like dying to know how many of you I'm connected to all over the world. Dying. This is my dying face. Okay, so you guys asked me some questions in here. So good morning, you magical creature. Hello, Leah. Um, I would ask, I have a point of view that my shitty relationship with money is not my own. And guys, if you have a shitty relationship with money, if you are functioning from poverty, lack, um, any of those other worry, you've got to change it if you want to have something totally different now and in the future. And the best tool that I can recommend is the How to Become Money Workbook by Gary Douglas. And I'm not kidding you. Find a way to go through that a hundred times. Don't fuck around with that. Literally, I told this story, but two years ago, I was struggling again for the 18th time, the 18,000th time after being a facilitator. And the one thing I chose was to go through that workbook every single two weeks, every two weeks. And it changed everything. So if, you've, if all you've been doing up to this point is dusting that workbook on your side table, figure out a way to go through it. It will change everything. And by the way, I am in London, Ontario. And I'm moving into a beautiful new house in London, Ontario, November 1st. So in almost two weeks, I move. I'm very excited. Um, you're from the Netherlands, Chicago land. So good. Okay, so money. So how to become money workbook. You guys need to deal with that. If you are in business, if you are breathing, if you have anything going on with money, you have to go through that workbook. It is the most game-changing tool for money that I have ever gone through, okay? If you go to my website, all my favorites, I, I put on the very top of my website, I love this stuff. You can find a link to getting the workbook there and a bunch of other things that have totally changed my life, okay? Um, somebody in here wanted me to talk about being fearless. Look, here's the thing about fear. If you guys buy, if you buy fear as real, you negate you. Now, every single time that you go to do a new thing, all this shit that I'm talking about today, all this starting a new stuff and being you in the world and all this grand and glorious motivational shit, right? Okay, cool. When the rubber hits the road and you are actually in it, you're choosing, you're being, you're in it, you're gonna have sensations that feel like fear. That's real that you will have a sensation. What's not real is that it's fear and that you need to stop. That's the part that's not real. The sensation, sure, you're having it. There's a lot of energy there. It feels like fear. The moment that I actually choose to go and start speaking on stage, you guys better believe you're gonna get a Facebook Live from me red-faced, like dealing with a lot of energy in my body. There's gonna be what feels like a lot of fear, a lot of terror, of course. I already know, because I've performed my whole life. You know, I played the piano. So, but if you mislabel it as fear and you let that thing stop you, then that will be the reason and the justification you stop. So being fearless is not about not ever having that energy in your body. That's not what that's about. That's a demand in your world that you are gonna go beyond that because you can and because it's fun for you. And that's it. So again, with you can use the tools to feel better and be like, oh my God, I have fear. What, what tool do I use here? Sure, yes, ask. Who does this belong to? But what I would ask you with fear is like, is it fear? Is it excitement? And can you use it to create something greater right now? That energy of fear is a lot of energy in your body. And you can use it to stop at, and this is true of any limitation. You can use any limitation you come across to stop at and go, oh fuck, a limitation. And you can sit down in the middle of the road at the feet of that limitation and just, oh my God, there's a limitation, right? Like, oh my God, there's a fear feeling. Or you can go, all right, whew, that's a lot of energy in my body. How do I use this? And go around. And all of those choices are yours in every moment. So how are you gonna use these things when they come up? Not how can I do something that never brings this up, but like, oh my God, okay, what would it take to use this energy to create? That's where I function from 98% of the time. Okay, um, Crystal. How do I keep trusting the process of things even though the reality is not showing the results? And this, guys, is why I create business programs because one of the things I was never shown as a creator, by the way, are you a creator? I was never shown how to look at 
what I was creating from an energetic point of view. I was only ever taught to look at results. So if I wasn't having results, or the results I thought I should have, which is where we all function from, I'm doing this thing, and here's the results I think I should have. Projections and expectations. So if I'm doing this thing and I'm not getting this result, then therefore that must mean, is where you have to go with that. Is that productive, yes or no? It seems like it should be productive, that's the logical way we're taught to function, but it never, ever, ever once acknowledges what you've created energetically. See, the, the true creation process is generation, creation, institution, actualization. Without any one of those elements, something doesn't exist. Without the generative space and time for a seed to be able to generate and pop up a new shoot and have some time to form some roots, that seed is a dead thing. Without the generative space of the sunlight and the water and the nurturing of the soil and the warmth, that seed is useless. So it has to have the generative time and space to grow roots and a little bit of a shoot. Once it's to a certain point, then you can plant it outside where it has to be a little more independent and depend more on its own structures and its own things to be able to create more. And then even then you're sort of risking. It's like, I hope it survives out here. Good luck, little plant, you do what you can. And then it grows a little bit stronger, does a bigger thing, creates more with the resources that it has. But all of those are required phases for everything that wants to be in the world. It doesn't matter if it's a seed, a tree, a plant, a thing, or a song, okay? So if you don't look at what you are creating energetically, you will miss what you're creating and you will kill it. You have to educate yourself and practice energetic acknowledgement of what you're creating. So you put a class on the books and nobody showed up. Energetically, did it create more, yes or no? Yes. And this is the practice of business as you go out and you are expanding things in the world. Because if you use the results you think you should have gotten, to negate you, you will destroy you. Is that what you want to create? Okay, here's Michael's question. How to generate outrageous, obscene, effortless, secure, sustainable, everlasting, engaging, enthusiastic, fun, unconditional wealth, money, income, joy for ourselves and our bodies now and always in the future? And guys, I would say like, if this is your ask, go through the How to Become Money Workbook. And yes, I'll be starting a class. And yes, you can join that. And I always charge more than most people are willing to pay. So go buy the workbook. You probably can't afford that class anyway. Do it yourself. And and literally like go through it. It will change where you're functioning from with money. So um, the other thing I would say is when you are in a request for something, like universe, what would it take for the money to show up now? I want you to pretend that everything listens to you. Even you don't have to believe it. You don't have to believe it. You don't even have to cognitively, you can't cognitively get it. I want you to notice that when you use an access consciousness tool like, hey, who does it belong to? The things change usually, if you're actually being a question, that when you clear an entity, it responds that when you do a clearing statement, things change, which means every molecule is listening to you, which means there's an abundant resource of conversations that you can be having with the universe at any given time because everything's listening to you. Are you engaged as you could be with all the molecules of the universe in what it would take for money to show up for you? Are you asking the questions that would give you awareness of what it would take for money to show up now? Do you want to engage in the work of that, in the play of that? Or are you hoping and wishing and praying that some fairy will drop it on you? If everything really truly listens to you, how can money show up for you that you haven't asked for yet, that you haven't engaged with yet? Okay, um, and I will talk about, well, I don't know, I'll talk about this too. <laughs> I was gonna say one more thing, but that might be a lie. Uh, okay, Evie asked a question about judgments, projections, and separation. 
What do you do when everyone wants something from you and no matter what you choose, they will never be happy? Welcome to life on planet Earth. <laughs> Receiving all of this without giving you up. Man, projections and expectations is its own class, its own video, its own talk. Um, but I'm going to say this so many times until everybody gets it in the whole world that wants to get it. The only thing projections and expectations can create is separation, judgment, and rejection. That's it. So you kind of have to look at it at some point. If you keep projecting and expecting yourself to make everybody happy, what's vital to you about that? This is everything. If you keep projecting and expecting that if you do this, this will get created, you've got to start to look at what's vital and valuable to you about holding on to that expectation of yourself. Because the only thing that expectation can create is separating from you judging you and rejecting you. So that must be right now the valuable stuff, right? If that's what you keep creating, if that's what keeps showing up, that right now is what's valuable to you, separating from you, judging you and rejecting you. And as insane as that sounds, once you are willing to get present with what you're actually creating, you can change it. So what is vital and valuable to you about functioning from judgment? What is vital and valuable to you about expecting things so that you can separate, judge and reject you? That's the only thing those things would create. They never, expectations never create results, ever. You create a program and you expect somebody and these amount of people to sign up. The only thing you can create with that is separation, judgment, and rejection. You have a spouse and you expect him to clean up after himself even though you know that he doesn't. The only thing you can create with that is separation, judgment, and rejection. I cannot tell you how many times I remind myself of this in a moment where I'm like, oh, I wanted this to happen. And as soon as I hear myself say that, I'm like, did you project and expect? It's always yes, because you only have frustration from projections and expectations. And then I'm like, okay, so do you want to choose something else? Literally, that's where I go next. I don't look for why I did it. I don't look for the story why I did it. I don't look for the abuse I must have suffered to be doing that. I'm just like, okay, well, that's what this create. Do you want to choose something else? And literally, that is the speed at which you can begin to change your reality for you. Now, all of, all, all of this is relevant to profiting relentlessly from being you. I have probably in the last, I don't know, three, four months, um, gotten more out of being me than at any other time in my life. And, you know, I'm probably more unsettled and more, I'm still living out of the suitcase that I packed four months ago. I mean, I can tell you guys that whole story when I move, when I move on November 1st and to show you my new place, I'll tell you that story. Um, so I don't have any real reasons to profit from being me. You know, I'm not making more money than I ever have. I'm not, none of the outward things that would Say, yes, I am valuable. I am real in this reality. I'm really making it. But I am so much more grateful and present and vulnerable and honoring of me than I ever have been. And that's me profiting from being me. And I'm making choices right now that I sort of t sometimes tell you about in the best way that I can, but most of the time are very quiet to me that you'll see down the road, you know. And so it's not relevant whether or not you know about them. They'll show up. But that's me profiting from being me because I am claiming and owning and choosing from and as my reality, which is something you could do too. But when you give that up for trying to make everybody happy or you give that up for what it is you've decided is the right way to do things or you give that up for anything else besides what's going to actually work for you and you don't ask yourself the questions that give you the awareness of what's true for you, then you don't get to profit from being you. And are you being relentless in what it is that you want to be in the world, that you are the gifts that you are? the gifts that you want to see, the world that you would like to see. Are you being relentless in that? Or are you just giving up about every other day or so? And I get it because, man, I have done that so much. Given up and given up and given up. But I always stand back up. And if you're watching this video, the same is probably true of you. So what if you shorten the time span between giving up and standing back up? And then what if in one of those moments you give up and you're like, never mind, I'm not giving up. 
I'm continuing, we're gonna keep going. What would it be like to be relentlessly present, relentlessly grateful, relentlessly honoring, relentlessly vulnerable, relentlessly on the creation of a different reality, relentlessly committed to the 10 keys to total freedom. Why? Because freedom, because choice, because different reality. What would that be like? Would your business be different? Would the world be different? Would you be different? Would you have a different experience here as you? You were invited to profit relentlessly, to be the energies that you've judged so that you can be all of you. So what energy, space, and consciousness can you and your body be to be as judgeable as you refuse to be for all eternity? And everything that doesn't allow it times a godzillion will you destroy and uncreate it all. Right, wrong, good, bad, pop, pop, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. What if you were willing to be everything? Who the fuck cares? Willing to be it doesn't mean you don't have choice. But even if it did mean that, if you were willing to be everything you judged as wrong, mean, vicious, terrible, and awful, or good, perfect, correct, and you could just choose what's going to work, what's going to create, would, would it be greater? So what energy and space and consciousness can you and your body be to create a reality beyond this reality with total ease? And everything that doesn't allow it, right, wrong, good, bad, pop, pop, online, shorts, boys and beyonds. Check out the challenge. Join us tomorrow. And you know I'm going to be back with more stuff. I adore you. If you liked this, would you help me and share it and like it and comment on it. all the good things that make Facebook happy? I adore you.